High-low guard sail is a great Wing Chun technique for catching kicks. Keep watching and you'll see why. The high low ganso within the Wing Chun system is quite an effective shape. It's versatile, you can use it against hands, you can use it against kicks, you can use it to get stick, you can use it in lots of different dynamic ways. But the key thing about high low ganso is the way that the low hand retracts high. It, it teaches you, effectively, how to recover the low hand to a high position, and that's what gives it its versatility. You see it within the, wood, sorry, within the Wing Chun wooden dummies. You see it within the knife forms, you see it in lots of different parts of Wing Chun training. But what we're going to do is we're going to look at how you use it against kicks. It's a, a far easier principle to get across. So if Mike throws a straight kick towards me, it becomes much more of a versatile idea where I'm actually redirecting and taking the kick slightly offline. It's not so abrasive. As the kick comes in, I can cover, and as you can see, I can bring the other hand up to trap. So we call this Lao Tzu, it's a rising hand. So the high low ganta works quite nicely because what I do is I slip, okay, and as I slip, I cover, I rise, and then it gives me all sorts of possibilities to take my partner down. So I could chop him in the throat, I could lift my knee up and throw him down, I could sweep his other foot out, I could, even as he comes through, I could go in one and kick the other leg and the knee and then throw him around. So it's a great shape but we're going to look at how we use it more effectively. <laughs> so the main point of this video is really just to show how you can take some of these traditional ideas and you can make them much more applicable to, if you like, modern training. Now the thing about the high low guard out, it's an open hand shape technique. It's open hand and it's changing and it's very tight. But how does that work if you're going to wear gloves? That's a classic question, I get it all the time from my students. So let's have a look a couple of ideas of that. So if I put the gloves on, obviously it's going to change the shape of my hand. It doesn't necessarily change the shape of my forearm because the forearm still has the same angle, it still has the same direction. So now what happens is I'm actually getting a difference in the terms of position of the hand shapes, but we're going to look at how we're going to use this with kicks. Now, one of the things I wanted to try to get across is that when the straight kick comes in and you use high and low guns out, it's absolutely fine to do it the way we did earlier, but the problem is that's not abrasive. What happens if he throws a roundhouse kick? If he throws a roundhouse kick and you take the classical interpretation of doing this high and low gansai into his shin, what you're going to find is as the kick comes in, bang, you're going to meet bone on shin. And I'm not a betting person, but good tie boxers can kick through baseball bats. So I wouldn't necessarily want to put my forearm in the way of a shin that's coming at high speed. So the idea is what one of the things we do here is that we teach students to dissipate the power of the kick with the arm and then change it to a high and low guard out. So effectively as the kick comes in, they'll dissipate and whether the guy's setting up with punches and he's coming in will be covering up but if he's dissipating here, what you're actually doing is taking the kick back on the glove and then wrapping it. And in that sense, what you're doing is you're taking your high and low guard out from here one, and then wrapping for the high and low guard to keep control. So the good thing about the glove is that if he goes on the other side, as I'm wrapping from this position here, one, I'm wrapping, and a small little detail on this is you lift your elbow slightly as the kick comes towards your head. We're specifically talking about head kicks here, okay, not body kicks. When he's kicking for your head, if you lift your elbow slightly, as you lift your elbow slightly, you capture, you capture his shin and keep his shin stuck. So it's really difficult for him to retreat, to get his leg out. From this position, it's quite easy to complete the high and the guard. You see the, the top hand, the low hand, and then the rising trapping hand. And this part here is trapping his leg. And that's the detail really now, where you've got a lot of ideas where you can roll, take him down to finish him off. That's the easy part. The hard part as always is getting hold of the kick and the kick comes in fast and hard, very difficult to get hold of and that's why generally we'll cover up, if he's dealing with punches we'll cover up, cover up and then look for the opportunity that when we've got that to wrap, create a wedge and capture the leg. From there you can kick, you can knee and most importantly if you're going to take the guy down you can wrap around, bow and take him down. It's 
very easy to do. It's one of the best, most effective ways we've found to deal with high-powered head kicks by using this high and low guard and wrapping and controlling. So the key point to remember is that if you're going to use high and low guard set, you've got to try to dissipate the energy of the kick. You can't take on the kick straight on, especially with high and low guard set, because it will damage your arms. So hopefully you've enjoyed it. If you've got any questions, please feel free to leave comments. My name's Mark Phillips, I'm from the London Wing Chun Academy. Please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you.